my channel, this is Sal speaking, and today we will be talking about a really cool topic, Roman cookery. We will be exploring and understanding more about this cookery as I got a new book, it's called the Roman Cookery Book, and I will get most of the recipes from this book. I just gave a look to this book and I made a little bit of research about this topic, and I find it very fascinating as intriguing too. There's a lot to learn, there are so many things to do and there are many ingredients that are not so easy to get but we will do our best. Cookery books seem to have been numerous in antiquity but luckily enough only one has come down to us and this is the Apicius book and I am holding it into my hands right now and it is basically preserving two 9th century manuscripts. Gavius Apicius lived at the time of Tiberius. Apicius seems to be so famous, so well known by many authors. There are several stories about Apicius as he is a very interesting character in Roman history. He also invented many recipes. Seneca, the Latin author, gives an account of his death. He talks a little bit about his death and he tells us that he was counting his fortune and he was he realized that he spent so much money on food he basically ran out of money and the only the only thing he could do was starving so instead of dying out of starvation he poisoned himself so Apicius is well known for being the writer of two books he apparently wrote two cookery books the first one is a general book where he talks about general recipes. The other book was a special book on sauces. His fame hardly diminished with the passage of time. He was very well known among many Christian authors, such as San Jerome and all of Cluny speak of him often. His books must have attained equal fame as even Isidorus, another writer, talks about him and he states that Apicius was the first guy, the first man to write a cookery book. When we talk about Apicius and his recipes, we must consider that, unfortunately, we haven't got all of his recipes today. We can compare this to what happened to the Bible as well. As you know, the Bible is like basically means library and he, it contains lots of different books. The same thing happens to Apicius. Basically, the, the original text was translated in so many times and people have changed it. They have taken away so many good parts and important parts. In fact, today, unfortunately, we have got less sweet recipes than the ones he made. Approaching Roman cooker is not easy as we are talking about ancient Romans here. We're talking about another world, another society, and so I will do my best to present his recipes in the best of ways. Today I chose to talk about garum and we will analyze garum together. Also another interesting thing is that the recipes hardly and rarely tell, tell us about the actual quantities that you need to use in the making of the recipe. And, and that can be kind of hard for us to actually make the recipe. So my suggestion is in the approach of doing this recipes, first of all, we need to try many, many times. I mean, because we need to kind of find the right balance between the ingredients. And when we will find that balance, we will obtain, you know, the recipe we're looking for. When it comes to Roman cookery, I ask you and I plead and I hope that you will keep an open mind. Keep an open mind and make several tries. I can guarantee to you that the first time that you will make a Roman recipe, it will turn out perfect. If Apicius didn't write the quantities even back then, only very experienced cooks could actually cook his recipes. Because if you don't have any experience about cooking, you can't do anything about it. There are some illustrations of a pan, so this makes us think that probably Apicius' book, the original book, was probably illustrated. So 
so there were images and people could look at them to find help. There have been several translations from many people, you know, and apparently there is also another translation from an Italian uh, translator and it is really hard to find. So every translation by its nature is partly interpretation because, you know, when you translate a text and when you're translating an actual recipe, you know, you need to consider the usage of words. For example, even the garum word can be linked to a stock or a broth sauce. We can also say that sometimes translations make our work harder as we're trying to cook actual food. So the translators of this book I am holding on my hands right now are Barbara Flower and Elizabeth Rosenbaum. And I believe one of them passed away a few years ago and her friend kind of kept this project going because basically these two translators, they got together and they were like, okay, why shouldn't we cook Roman food? So they got together, they translated the text and they actually applied these recipes cooking for their friends. So, so they had a lot of fun cooking for their friends and they had the chance to experiment actually with these recipes. So since we're talking about British people and translators of this great opera, as we call it in Italian, they are like British and therefore they're stating that most herbs, they're saying that most herbs are obtainable in London. Most herbs are to be found in a dried form and you can also find many plants and seeds from herb nurseries. So if you know a place around your area, just check it out and you may find lots of ingredients that will be great and useful for the making of these ancient recipes. And the author of this book is stating that you may omit some of the herbs and the actual taste of the recipe will be still the same. I must disagree with that because if you know how to cook, you will know how to use every ingredient. When it, when it comes to cooking, it is very important that you use all of the ingredients in a recipe and that you find the right balance between the ingredients and you master how to cook it. It is really interesting how the Romans were using certain ingredients and they were combining these ingredients together into the obtaining of a meal. This meal was hard to recognize, so often time it was very hard to tell what was inside the actual meal. So no one at table would know what we were eating actually. Petronius offers grotesque examples of the passion of the Roman for the disguise of food, both in appearance and in taste. So for a moment, think about this. You are at a table sitting next to a Roman and they are giving you a plate with a meal. And this meal will look like chicken, but it's not chicken. The so-called liquamen is made as follows. The entrails of fish are thrown into a vessel and salted. Take small fish, either red mullet or sprats or anchovy, or any other small fish and salt all this together and leave to dry in the sun, shaking it frequently. When it has become dry from the heat, extract the garum from it as follows. Take a long fine meshed basket and place it in the middle of the vessel with the above mentioned fish. And in this way, the so-called requirement put through the basket can be taken up. The residue is alec. The Bithynians make it in the following manner. It is best to take large or small sprats or feigning them take anchovies or horse mackerel or mackerel. Make a mixture of all and put this into baking through. Take two pints of salt to the peck of fish and mix well to have the fish impregnated with the salt. Leave it for one night and then put it in an earthenware vessel which you place open in the sun for two three months. Stir it with a stick at intervals, then take it. 
cover it with a lid and store it away. Well guys, as you can see, making garum is not an easy task. It's really hard and it takes a long, long time. And it takes like two months to dry up in the sun. Can you believe that? Apparently it comes from Greece, actually. So basically the salted intestines coming from the fish together, they would generate this liquor. And this liquor was basically Whenever it would sediment, it would become an alec. While liquamen was mixed with water, vinegar, and even wine, and so forth. And sometimes they would even add some spices to this. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you feel sad, you better call sad. Bye bye. Well, my victim.